All righty, so we're going to be talking about crystals. You know, this is just a an introduction to crystals, and you know, I'm I'm so excited when I see people get you know intrigued by crystals. So, uh, for those of you who are here live, I would love to know in the chat where you're from, and if you have a crystal with you, type it in the chat. I would love to know what crystals you have for this event. All right, so my name is Allie Phillips, and um, I think a lot of you know me, but just to give you a little refresher, I have been an attorney for 27 years. This is a crystal loving, oil loving attorney. I am a former prosecutor. I have spent my entire career in the criminal justice field, um, either as a criminal prosecutor or teaching prosecutors. I have been educating criminal justice professionals, gosh, for <laughs> almost 20 years. It's been a long haul. Um, and I've published a lot of books. And as a result of my specialty, which is how animal abuse links to family violence, you know, fun stuff like that, um, I ended up creating a profit out, uh, a profit, a nonprofit <laughs> out of a concept I had created a long, 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 long time ago where uh, I help domestic violence shelters create on site pet housing. So it's called Sheltering Animals and Families Together. Um, tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. And my nonprofit helps domestic violence shelters for free. So have over 300 in five countries and 46 states. So it has grown nicely. Um, but I am also the owner of Manifested Harmony. I started this business over 10 years ago. I can't believe it's been 10 years. But I am a holistic wellness consultant because when I look at everything that I do, I don't just do one thing. I think I'm incapable of doing just one thing. <laughs> Some days I long for the day of just having one career, <laughs> one thing to focus on. But I have seven certifications uh, as a master teacher in a variety of energy healing modalities. And I'm also an advanced crystal master. Uh, I trained for 18 months with a science teacher and then went on and trained with others and have blended all of my training together. So when I talk about crystals, you get a very different perspective because of how I was trained. Um, I'm also a Young Living brand partner. I'm the author of The Oily Crystal and The Oily Pet. And yes, I do go to the Tucson uh, international gem show and look at that rose quartz. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? It is awesome. And it was icy cold to the touch. All right. So, all right. As everybody is telling me where you're from and ooh, we got lots of good crystals, lots of good crystals. All right. I see some good foundational crystals being put in the chat. So those of you who have taken my crystals, I see you have some of the more advanced crystals. All right, awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna dive in, all right? So in my crystal classes, I always talk about, um, there's basically two belief systems when it comes to crystals. You know, there's the scientific belief system and then what I call the purest um, belief system. Um, the science is very left brain scientific and the purist is very right brain, very creative, very metaphysical, very spiritual. And because I am a left brained attorney, right brain healer, I actually teach in a way that appeals to both sides of the brain. Um, so the purist and the scientist look at crystals very differently. And here's what I always tell my students in classes. Whatever you believe is right. Wherever you land is right. Because there are moments that I'm a pure, straight up 100% scientist. And then I have moments where I'm a purist. And then there's other times that I'm 100%, I'm a million percent a purist. And then I got a little bit of science going on. So let's talk about the science first. So 
crystals are very unique and I want you to hold one of your crystals as I'm talking. Okay, I want you to hold it and look at it. Like just look at it. You're going to get the recording to this. So don't feel like you got to take a ton of notes. I want you to look at it as I'm talking about kind of the scientific aspect because crystals have a fixed repeating crystalline geometric pattern. That's a mouthful a fixed repeating crystalline geometric pattern that forms from the inside out at the molecular level. It's called a crystal lattice. And every crystal grows differently. Some grow in points, some grow in chunks because they're kind of slushy messes like rose quartz. And they, they grow in like a chunk and they're a little sandy looking. And they grow in beautiful, beautiful formations. There's seven different crystal systems in how the crystals grow. And because of this fixed repeating crystalline geometric pattern that replicates and repeats over and over and over and over again inside the crystal, it's what differentiates crystals from stones and rocks. So I know out there in the world, people call crystals stones and rocks. But to a crystal professional, there is a world of difference. You would never catch me calling this beauty a rock or a stone because stones and rocks do not have that fixed repeating crystalline geometric pattern. They're just a, a hodgepodge of minerals. Stones, rocks, and crystals are all made of minerals, but the stones and the rocks do not have this fixed pattern. They don't have this crystalline pattern that gives the beautiful colors, um, sometimes the clarity, um, the shape, okay? You're not gonna see that. Now, what's beautiful with crystals, and if you look at that, that crystal that I, that I have on the right, I'm actually reaching for it. I have it here in my office. It's a fluorite tower, and she is one of, one of my favorite teachers in my classes. So if you come to one of my classes in person, I hand around crystals and we get high on crystals all day. It's awesome, it's pretty awesome. Um, but in some crystals, you can actually see the growth pattern and how it grows from the inside out in a, in a corkscrew pattern. And so look at the arrows. Do you see the lines in the crystal? Do you see, Do you see the growth pattern? So that's the top of the fluorite. And it is such a perfect example of the growth pattern. And, you know, it, how I look at crystals and how I teach my students, the shapes and the patterns of crystals, not only on the outside, but on the inside is the most fascinating. And all of the inclusions, those lines, all the shapes, the color, you know, the swirliness, all has meaning in the crystal world. But when I go into crystal stores, when I even go to crystal shows and big expo events where, you know, people like me who sell crystals, you know, we go and, you know, we work with the dealers. I see a lot of overly shaped crystals. I see overly polished, overly processed, you know, clear quartz that is so clear, it looks like glass, and it probably is glass. And when I see these overly shaped, you know, taking a beautiful crystal and shaping it like a turtle. Okay, you know, that that's cute. But when they are overly processed, they are going to lose their crystalline structure at some point when there is too much processing. But in spite of that, what I love about crystals is their base resonant frequency. Okay, what does that mean? Base resonant frequency, everything has a base resonant frequency. And what, whatever that base frequency is, is what the thing is. So it doesn't go below whatever that frequency is. So like we as humans have a base resonant frequency and when we go below it, we get sick. Um, your desk that you're sitting at has a base resonant frequency, which is why it's a desk. 
you know, this air out here has a frequency to it. Well, crystals, as their base resonant frequency, it's a constant frequency that is not impacted by entropy. Entropy is destruction. So humans and animals, we suffer from high rates of entropy because our physical structure and our cells are not fixed. Our cells are constantly growing and dying, growing and dying, right? Plants outside. So I'm here in Michigan. <laughs> we got snow yesterday. Oh, good grief. <laughs> and so all of my perennials outside have technically died and then they will regrow in the spring, right? That's entropy. And at some point, it just won't grow back. At some point, we will not rejuvenate, okay? And we are mostly water and water fluctuates a lot, okay? So our base resonant frequency is constantly, our frequency is up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. But with crystals, it's not. It has a set, constant frequency that doesn't change. It's why these, these little beauties are millions and billions of years old, okay? They were here first, they will be here last, okay? So what I love about, about that is, you know, we, we are naturally drawn to crystals. I mean, post something in, in the chat here. If you are just naturally drawn to crystals and you don't understand why. Like type yes, like yes, Allie, I get it. I'm drawn to crystals, I buy them, I don't know what they do, I don't know how to work with them, I don't understand it, but I keep buying them because I'm fascinated by them. Yes, we all do. I have been collecting crystals since I could walk, <laughs> since, I, since I could walk, literally I've had crystals. We're naturally drawn to them because we actually have crystals in our body. We have magnetite in our brain. Magnetite is a crystal. It's an iron-based crystal. And we have silica lining our cell membranes. Silica is quartz. Silica is quartz. So the animal kingdom, which is us, the mineral kingdom, which is crystals, and the plant kingdom, which is our beloved essential oils, because I know y'all use oils, they all communicate in vibrational frequency with each other. So they don't communicate in words like we do, but we communicate vibrationally with oils, right? You use an oil and you feel awesome or it calms you down, right? Same thing with crystals. We communicate vibrationally with them. So in my basic crystal healing class, I actually go pretty in depth in three physics principles to really explain how the body reacts when it's in the presence of a crystal. Here's the short story. When it comes to the base resonant frequency of a human or an animal, and you know, knowing that we suffer from high rates of entropy where our cells are growing, dying, growing, dying, and that crystals have a fixed structure with very, very, very low, very low, virtually no rate of entropy. The crystals dominate our energy field and dominate us at a cellular level. Because in these physics principles, it's all about a larger dom it's a larger vibration that dominates a lower vibration. So in that scenario, the crystals are the larger vibration, we are the lower. The crystals are the stronger vibration, we are the weaker. The crystals are the strong vibration because we fluctuate all day long, right? You wake up, you feel great, you leave your house, you encounter a crazy driver and it impacts your mood. You just fluctuated. Crystals don't fluctuate. And that's why when, when I go over these physics principles, it explains, okay, <laughs> now I understand when I hold a crystal, how it improves my mood, improves my energy, calms me down, okay? the lower vibration will always synchronize with a higher frequency. And that's what happens when we are either holding or within the, in the presence of a crystal. All right. So let's talk about this um, synchronization that happens. So everything in creation has a frequency to it everything, even this air out here that you think is just vacant, it has a frequency to it. 
Everything has a vibrational rate. And, you know, when we, the, the photo on the left is um, some of the crystals that I have on my fireplace mantle in my living room. And when we have crystals in our home or when we put crystals on us, I lay on the couch all the time watching a Hallmark movie or The Bachelorette. <laughs> That's my vice. I can't help it. <laughs> I lay with crystals on me because we synchronize to the crystals energy. So the crystals have an energy field. And in my basic class, I actually uh, show everybody a technique on how you can measure the energy field of a crystal. It's crazy. But the short story is the bigger the crystal, the bigger the energy field, the smaller the crystal, the smaller the energy field. And so we know that we have an energy field that is frequency based. Crystals have an energy field that is frequency frequency base. And our energy field, if you look at that top right photo, we our energy field is it's called a torus. And the energy, you know, comes up through our feet, goes out through our head, and then it circulates around us like an egg shaped. And this is our energy field. And our energy field can be really big, like 50, 60 feet. It can be really small and really compressed on us. Well, if no matter how big our energy field is, if a crystal just comes within our energy field, we start synchronizing with it. And, and here, is, here is a beautiful explanation from Dr. Bruce Lipton. If you don't know who he is, he is a internationally recognized cellular biologist. He is the author of The Biology of Belief. If you have not read that book, Immediately after this class, go on Amazon, get that book. It will radically and dramatically change how you view health. Okay. So rec I highly recommend that book. So anyway, in this book, Dr. Lipton talks about how our DNA has these little receptors on them, little antennas. And these antennas, our DNA antennas, are constantly examining our surroundings for frequencies and will reshape itself to synchronize with, the, with whatever it comes into contact with. So have you ever walked into a room and there were a bunch of super happy people, they were just chatting and so excited and you walked in and they raised you up? Yeah, okay, yep, it happens to me all the time. And then you can walk into a room where maybe people are gossiping and being all negative and they come over to you and they dump all their problems on you and you walk away feeling worse because your DNA has these antennas and it's examining the surroundings and it will reshape itself and synchronize with whatever it comes into contact with. This is why be very careful of what you come into contact with. <laughs> all right. So. When a crystal is introduced into our energy field, this torus, the crystal acts as an oscillator. An oscillator is a frequency stabilizer, all right? And it synchronizes or entrains our energy. It stabilizes it to synchronize with the crystal. And this is how a lot of people ask, it's hard to explain how I work with oils and crystals and energy healing to remove energy blocks from the energy field, but that's how. That, that's how it works because our energy field is constantly adjusting itself to whatever it's around. So understanding the layers of the energy field can, can really help us keep a flow of energy um, because if we don't have a flow of energy, we're going to manifest a physical problem. We will. Um, and so with there are, you know, disruptive negative energies, they will imbalance our energy field out here and then eventually make their way and impact us physically. So there's so many doctors that, that have been talking about this. Um, another one of my favorite books is Vibrational Medicine um, by Dr. Richard Gerber. And in that book, this is a quote, I'm going to read this from him. The physical body is so energetically connected and dependent upon the etheric or the energy body 
for cellular guidance that the physical body cannot exist without the etheric energy body, this stuff out here. If the etheric energy field becomes distorted, physical disease soon follows. Many illnesses begin first in the etheric energy body and then later manifest in the physical body as organ pathology. That is from an MD. Okay, so this is why even having a crystal in your environment, knowing that we have these DNA antennas that are reshaping themselves, why wouldn't we have crystals in our environment? Why wouldn't we have them all over our house, lay them on our body? Okay, so crystals contain the DNA of Mother Earth. They literally are pulled out from the earth and contain her frequency and her minerals. And, you know, th think about it like when you go out in nature, you feel great, right? You go to the beach, you feel great. If any of you follow me on uh, Instagram and Facebook, pretty much once a week I'm at Lake Michigan because it feels so great. Even in the winter, I'm there. So crystals transmit an energy to us. And by holding a crystal, you're going to feel it and you're going to synchronize with the energy vibration it's actually principle it's called principle of entrainment it's a physics principle and so when a crystal is introduced into this energy field we will become the crystal yeah the book is called vibrational medicine by dr richard gerber so crystals with you know and, and this this is what i teach in my classes i teach people how to understand what a crystal is made of. You can look at the shape, you can look at the color and you can start figuring out what it does. But crystals that have iron or aluminum in them can absorb and transmute negative electromagnetic frequencies like Wi-Fi. We have no idea what Wi-Fi does to us at a cellular level, no clue. So iron and aluminum based crystals can do that. Silicon based crystals, silica like quartz, amplify energy, amplify other crystals. And we know this, we also know that they can be programmed and they store information because it's what Silicon Valley and the tech industry uses to power your computer, your phone, my laptop, my smartwatch, your watch, because it says quartz technology, that's quartz. All right, so the tech industry Knows how, knows how to use crystals to program, to store, and to amplify. Isn't that awesome? So when, so when, you know, when people say to me, you know, oh, you know, they're, they're just pretty little stones. They don't do anything. And I'm like, you actually have stones on you and in you. You have crystals on you, your watch, your cell phone, and you have them in you. <laughs> and it freaks them out. I love saying that to them. All right, so so let me give you, let me give you a little bit about crystal shape. So what you see on the screen is Curlian photography, which is heat seeking photography. Um, the military uses it, and um, they did uh, some Curlian photography on crystals, and you can actually see the energy coming out of the crystals. So energy flows strongest from the points on a crystal. So a crystal that naturally grows in a point not has been polished into a point, but naturally grows in a point like quartz, okay? Like amethyst, um, like citrine, like smoky quartz naturally grows in a point. Um, the, the strongest energy comes from the point. And when stones are cut and polished, the energy doesn't actually flow. It just radiates out, okay? Now there's no scientific proof that a polished or a tumbled crystal or a cut crystal is any less powerful than one that was just pulled from the earth and it is what it is. This is where the scientists say there is no difference. There's no difference. You can polish it, you can cut it, you can smash it on the floor and you can look at all the pieces and under a microscope, it's still gonna have its crystalline structure. The purists on the other hand say, don't do anything to the crystal. Don't polish it, don't po poke a hole in it and hang it on a necklace, don't do that. This is where both are right. Both are right. It, wherever you fall is wherever you fall. And the size of the crystal is going to 
determine how much energy it's putting off. So in my classes, I actually teach a technique on how to figure out the energy range of a crystal. But also the shapes and the colors and the minerals that are in it all have very specific purposes, all have very specific meanings. And I'll tell you, once, once you take a crystal class, if you want to take one of my classes, because I, I teach in a very, very different way. It's, it's very comprehensive. Um, I guarantee you will be a lifelong excited learner about crystals. Lifelong. Lifelong. Because it's fascinating. And there's new crystals that appear all the time. A new crystal just um, was discovered in Israel, uh, and it's harder than a diamond. So it's like, okay, well, that's going to be fascinating. So, um, so in my classes, I actually teach you um, how to work with crystals based on their size and their shape, because you know, little little itty bitty crystals. Wait, do I have any here? Yeah, little little you know, small crystals absolutely have a time and a place. Big ones have a time and a place, okay? And I teach all of this. And I also teach how to put crystals in um, geometric patterns like that. That's a grid I actually have going right now. Um, it's, a, it's a divine feminine empowerment grid. Um, and so I, I teach how this works um, because this actually speaks the language of the universe because everything in creation was built on sacred geometry patterns, everything including our DNA has sacred geometry patterns in it. It's the craziest thing. When I show photos, everybody freaks out. It's like, whoa. I mean, you're gonna learn things in crystal classes that you never thought you would learn. But I want to, okay, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask y'all a question here. Do you think these, these two crystals are natural? Okay, uh, the left one is a citrine and uh, the right one is a smoky quartz. Do you think those are natural, like that's how they were dug out of the ground and that's, that's what they look like? Post me a comment in the chat, a yes or a no. Wow, look at all the no's. All right, it's actually both yes and no. So these did come out of the earth. However, they were tampered with, they were tampered with. There is a growing industry of lab created crystals, lab altered crystals, like what you see on the screen and overly processed crystals on the market. And at some point they will lose that base resonant frequency and that crystalline lattice that gives them their power. And so I actually educate my students to not buy these crystals. Um, so the citrine is, is actually a citrine. It, it was what you see there, it was heat treated, started off as an amethyst. And when they heated it above ground, not in the earth, but above ground, the iron changed color. So that one is still safe. It is still a crystal at its core by heating it, the iron changed from purple in an amethyst to yellow in a citrine. And by their name, the color of the crystal dictates the name. Amethyst is purple. Purple, 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 okay? And citrine is yellow, okay? You're not gonna find a green citrine. If you do, it's fake, okay? So by the iron changing color, the name changes, but it's still a crystal. But I'll tell you the one on the right, I would not touch. That is an irradiated quartz and how they irradiate it can turn it, not always, but it can become radioactive, okay? Because you're using radiation on it. So when you see a crystal that looks like it was painted on the tips and it's not through and through, like look at those. I mean, it looks like they spray painted them, right? Yeah, that's, that's not what Mother Earth does. What do you think about those? Are those real? Type me in the comment if you think those are real. No, those are fake. Those were real crystals and they put them in a high temperature oven 
coated them in titanium. And because of the high heat, it actually destroys the crystalline lattice. Those crystals typically have the name Aura behind them. And I always teach my students, please don't buy them because all we're doing is fueling the industry and they're gonna create more. So I, I teach the, this sort of stuff in my crystal classes because it's pretty bad what's happening. All right, so we live, and post me a comment in, in the chat if you agree with me. We live in an energetically stressful world right now, don't we? It's been going on for many years, okay? I see it in how physically unwell people are. Take the pandemic out of the equation and you still, we still have an outrageously unhealthy population. I see it in how emotionally imbalanced people are and that it's, it's actually coming through in horrific violence and just treating other people horribly. I see it in like mental nervous system disorders that we never used to have. We never used to have them. And I see it spiritually and how disconnected people are from just having faith and guidance and being connected to something bigger than themselves. And I'll tell you, crystals are one of the best tools for dealing with the energy change that we're in. We, we are in a full on energy change, all right? I'm actually teaching, you see it at the bottom of the screen, I'm teaching a class next Tuesday on this about the shifting energies. So it's a free class. I encourage you to join um, to get into that class because here's what's happening. Um, the earth's vibration is dramatically increasing and it's leaving people feeling anxious and ungrounded. Like they're scattered, they can't think, they have brain fog, um, they're anxious with a lot of road rage, a lot of violence. I actually track the earth's vibration and I can match it to violence, which is pretty sad. Um, crystals can ground us to the earth so that we actually ride the energies better. I, I always talk about it like you're on a roller coaster and when you're grounded to the earth, you're belted in on the roller coaster. So you're still screaming your head off, but it's joyful. And if you're not grounded to the earth, you are not buckled in on that roller coaster and you're literally hanging on by a pinky and you're screaming out of fear. We have to ground ourselves. And I'm gonna share some grounding crystals with you that are my favorites right now. But technology and electromagnetic frequencies and, and Wi-Fi, we, we have no idea what these frequencies are doing to our body. We know that frequencies alter water. If you've ever followed Dr. Uh, Mazuru Emoto's water experiments, water fluctuates even by the spoken word. Those were his studies. Speaking joyful words, speaking hateful words to water actually changed the structure of the water. We're 70% water. So if words can literally change us inside, what are these frequencies doing? This is where iron and aluminum based crystals help to transmute these negative energies. We never want to block an energy because it'll bounce and rebound. We have to transmute it and iron and aluminum does that. I'm going to share my favorite crystals in a little bit um, for doing that. Um, also energetically stressful are all the toxins in our world. I mean, there's, there's toxins everywhere. It is ridiculous what's in our food and our water and our air. And I mean, everything, it impacts our DNA, but crystals can actually help our DNA synchronize in a healthier way. Cause remember our DNA is constantly sending out its little feelers to synchronize and reshape itself to what it surrounds it. Well, I would prefer to surround myself with crystals. Okay. And that's how we can deal with toxins. And then toxic emotions from people. Oh, good grief. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> With all the divisiveness in the world, I seriously want to run around and hand everybody a crystal and a couple drops of essential oil and tell them, you need, you need to settle down. You need to calm your butt down. Okay? <laughs> so crystals can help us feel calmer more confident, 
happier because they connect us to earth. They connect us and really help us open up spiritually and intuitively to, to have, a con have a connection to something other than social media and mainstream news and what's going on. It just, it takes us out of the chaos and connects us to something that actually gives us balance. And so soothing crystals, high vibrational crystals will do that. And I'm going to share some of my favorites, but I've been teaching for almost a decade now, and actually nine years now, since we had the, really the start of the energy shift, uh, December 21st of 2012, which was the end of the Mayan calendar. If you know what that is, um, I have been teaching that we have to ground and ascend or raise our energies at the same time. Some people are either really grounded or they're really high vibrational. You have to be both. Crystals help you be both because there are crystals that have grounding minerals and high vibrational minerals in them at the same time. So, um, so anyway, if you're curious about the current energies, this free class um, next Tuesday, I would very much encourage you to get in it um, because it's, um, it's just kind of a little preview of a membership group that I have called the Sacred Shift where a couple, a couple of the members are, are actually in it on this call. And we're actually shifting our energies to thrive in the current world rather than feeling stuck and angry and not sure what's going on. So um, I hope you'll join for a preview of what it is because you're gonna learn some really cool stuff in it. And crystals are a big part of it. All right, so, so you know, why, why you want to work with crystals is they can help increase your energy they can also calm your energy they can connect you to the earth um, they can help you transform belief systems um, they can help you with intuition they can improve your mood they can help you handle the energy shift that we're in they they synchronize your vibrational frequency to the crystal so that you don't suffer from high rates of entropy there's a lot of reasons to work with crystals. So how do you do it? Well, just place them around your home. Place them around your home to improve the energy in your home. Keep them in your office or your workspace. However, no quartz based crystals near technology, clear quartz amplifies. So if you stick this next to your computer, your computer is going to be about 50 times energetically larger than it should be. So you want an iron or an aluminum based crystal near your computers. Um, put crystals on your nightstand to help you sleep. Put them under your bed, put them all around your house. I have grounded the four corners of my house with black tourmaline. I've grounded um, my healing room with selenite to raise the vibration. Um, you can wear crystals. All right, did anybody, um, I think a lot of you are with Young Living. Did anybody get the um, crystal bracelet that came with the geranium bourbon? Um, essential oil that came out during the holiday launch. This is a sunstone crystal. And if you have it, and if you wear any sort of watch, you wear it on the wrist with your watch. Why would you do that with sunstone? And then I have other crystals on my other hand. Why would I put the sunstone next to my smartwatch? Sunstone has aluminum in it. Aluminum transmutes electromagnetic frequencies. Wear it next to your watch. See how that works? <laughs> Nobody is talking about this stuff. This is the stuff that I get all geeked out about. And I love sharing it with you guys. Such practical things that explain which wrist do you wear crystals on, okay? So wear your crystals. You can place certain crystals in water and drink them. I drink clear quartz water every day. That's all I drink is clear quartz water. Now, if you have my book, The Oily Crystal, I give you the test of what crystals can go in liquid like essential oils. Same rule applies for water. Most hardness six and higher and it can't be toxic. Okay, so no aluminum or lead based crystals are gonna go in water. Most crystals are toxic and they have heavy metals in them, but they're okay to touch. Um, you can hold them during meditation to calm yourself down. You can place them on the body for balance, place them on your chakras. You know, this is what I teach in my classes is how to do body layouts. Um, I even teach a pet class 
and how to use them with pets in all sorts of settings in your car when you're transporting at a vet clinic you know at a boarding facility you know when they're crated um all sorts of things so everybody this is rudy so rudy it took you forever to show up usually he's here quicker so lots of different ways to work with crystals so i'm going to share with you before we end um my favorite grounding crystals and my favorite high vibrational crystals so let's get into a little metaphysics here a little bit of the spirituality um because even though i love the science i can go full on woo woo with you all i can my lawyer brain doesn't understand it but oh boy does the healer part of me really love this so staying grounding is very important in this world because it really helps us shift into higher energy and so grounding crystals can help calm anxious feelings and the jitters and the racing mind especially at night um, the roller coaster emotions uh, they can help us sleep they can help us think clearly make good decisions and just have a calm peacefulness about ourselves i'm finding too many people are ungrounded and their energy is off putting it's like oh my gosh so like if you are trying to grow a business and it's not growing you just might need to ground yourself because <laughs> it, it 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 just could be energetic that could be off-putting to people so these are and believe me there's a lot of grounding crystals out there but these are some of my favorites amethyst okay amethyst has iron in it it calms overly sensitive emotions it's really good for emotional balancing um the iron is protective so this is a protective crystal. If you're going into a crowd, put an amethyst in your pocket, put it in your bra, okay? I teach everybody, stick your crystals in your bra. Nobody needs to know that they're there. What it does is it transmutes low energy, negative energy into a more uplifting energy. So it actually takes you into a higher consciousness, but this is a crystal that helps you ground and raise your energy at the same time. And that's the energy that we're in. We need to do both. All right, Aura Light 23. Oh my gosh. I So I have a private crystal store that is available to my crystal students, my crystal membership group. I do, I, I have taken it public once. I think I may be taking it public again, either later this week or next week. Um, but oh, I got Aura Light 23. This comes from the Canadian side of Lake Superior. So as a Michigander, Oh my gosh, I'm all over this crystal. It has 23 grounding and high vibrational minerals in it. And the red cap that you see there is quite rare. Quite rare. Oh my gosh. It 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 will help you calm your butt down. It is amazing. It is amazing. If you get into like hustle energy and you're just like go 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 go, you hold your aura light 23 it calms you down. Black tourmaline, this is the ultimate grounding crystal. This is what you put on your Wi-Fi router. You put it between you and your computer. Um, you can get um, a black tourmaline patch to put on the back of your smartphone, um, put it in front of your television. It transmutes electromagnetic frequencies into a positive energy. So this is an amazing grounding crystal. It's very calming, very calming, great for technology. This is what you put near your computer. And then smoky quartz. Now the one on the screen is a smoky rutilated quartz. It's got the gold root tiles in it. Looks like angel hair. Um, this is very calming, very grounding if you're stressed out. It blocks electromagnetic frequencies. It's really good if you're feeling fearful. If you're fearful, you are not grounded. Okay, and the root tiles just give you this nice burst of energy infusion. So even though it's a grounding crystal, it'll raise you up. Oh, it is beautiful. All right, now for high vibrational, I could not choose. <laughs> I could not choose. There's so many. Um, now, a lot of these are pretty high end crystals. Um, and these are the sort of crystals I have in my crystal store. I don't sell your everyday crystals that you can just go buy anywhere. I sell the really weird, unusual, rare stuff because that's what we need in the energies that we're in. Don't get me wrong. Amethyst, rose quartz, clear quartz are amazing foundational crystals, but 
when you need more, this is what I go to. Okay, so um, clear, so clear quartz is an amazing crystal. Clear quartz comes from a variety of areas across the world. It is a master healer because its only job is to move chi in the body. It just moves energy in the body. When you move energy, all your parts and pieces in your body and your energy field are flowing and feel good. And when you hold it, it expands your energy field. Now within the clear quartz family are some specific ones that I particularly love, my students love, and I, I sell these like crazy, Tibetan quartz. Known as the global peacekeeper comes from the Tibetan mountains, uh, the Himalayan mountains on the Tibet side. Um, this is a very high vibrational crystal for ascension, raising your energy, because think of the mountains, they're super high. That's what this, that's what this crystal does. It raises you up um, and they are mined in what the Tibetan monks call the Om vibration location. The Himalayan mountains on the Tibetan side have the Om vibration. The Om vibration is the healing vibration of the of the universe. Okay, that's what that's what a Tibetan quartz does. Now the Himalayan quartz can be clear or it can be pink. Pink is quite rare. I broker these pink crystals. They're known as the Eye of God. They glow, grow very close to the celestials. They're from the Himalayan mountains, but they're on the Nepal and the India side. And you will receive a very personal high frequency energy exchange when you are in the presence of a pink Himalayan. So the one that's on your screen, oh my God, it has green chloride on it. it this is outrageously rare. This is why I go to the Tucson Gem Show so that I can work with my dealer from India to get these. I love these. Oh my gosh. I can't keep them all for myself. So this is a great crystal to really help you get into a frequency of being in the right place at the right time, drawing in the right people, the right situations. It's very high vibrational. And the pink in the pink Himalayan is all about heart expansion because what is thriving in our energies now are heart-based businesses, heart-based concepts, heart-based programs, heart-based ideas. It's all heart chakra and that crystal will do it. All right, Lemurians. Um, Lemurians come from Brazil. They're very high vibration, help you access ancient knowledge. They raise you up intuition will go through the roof. If you feel like you have no intuition, working with crystals will get you there. Now, I love the red Lemurians. They're called red. Um, when hematite goes into a, a Lemurian, it looks um, a reddish pink. And so this is a grounding yet high vibrational crystal. So I love red Lemurians and I have those in my store too. Um, Herkimer diamonds come from Herkimer County, New York. And this is called the attunement crystal. It raises your personal vibration. It helps with energy block issues. It gives you clarity and prosperity and career achievement. Um, it even clears electromagnetic pollutions because it has black carbon in it. Um, and it helps with cellular rebalancing. Oh, I want my DNA to be attached to a Herkimer diamond. I work with Herkimer diamonds every day. I love them. All right, Kunzite, this is the stone of emotion. Now this comes out of Afghanistan. Um, I got a supply right now, but I'm a little concerned about the supply coming out because of what's happened over there. Um, but this, for a country that is that has forever experienced such violence and hardships, this is one of the most unconditional loving stones you can find. I think it grows there for a reason. Um, it helps you to connect with others. It helps with self-love. It is really good for fussy newborn babies. Every teenage girl should have a kunzite in her pocket or in her bra. This is the crystal of self-love and it just expands the heart chakra so much to unconditional love. 
which we need more of in this world right now because of the divisiveness. Apophyllite, this is called the Reiki stone, really good for dream work and vision work, like vision casting, trying to see your future, really good for intuition. It's a great calming crystal. Um, I have a huge slab that I put underneath my healing table when I do sessions. I've got a huge slab right here underneath me right now <laughs> in my office. It's amazing. Danburite. So this was the little crystal um, that I held up earlier. Oh my gosh, Danburite, often confused for clear quartz, but it grows differently. Um, this is called the crystal of enlightenment. It is a fifth dimension crystal. And if you don't know what the fifth dimension is, um, yeah, you need to take my crystal classes because I go through all of this. But this is a very pure high vibration. It links your heart chakra and your crown chakra so that you are making decisions from your heart and your heart is divinely guided. Um, it helps with deep change and leaving the past behind and karmic healing. Okay, who needs a Danburite? Leave the past behind and move forward into a new energy. Mm -hmm. Yep, sign me up. Rudy, Rudy likes it too. He loves his crystals. All right, what's next on the list? Citrine. Okay, you see the citrine that's in the center of the screen? That's what a, that's what a natural citrine looks like. Not that yellow version that I showed you that was heat treated. Natural citrine in the earth is a brownish yellow color, but citrine either way is a very happy, optimistic crystal. It has the energy of the sun. Um, so if you're very sensitive to your environment, you probably have electromagnetic sensitive sensitivity. And this is a very protective crystal because it has iron in it. It's also good for fatigue because it raises you up. This is basically the essential oil version of citrine is lemon. <laughs> This is your lemon, <laughs> all right? Oh, and in my crystal classes, I give you oil pairings for all of these too, I forgot to say that. All right, selenite, ooh, selenite is called the crystal of Christ consciousness. This is pure white light healing, super, super high vibrational, um, helps you with spiritual lessons, it balances emotions, it gets everything moving in your energy field and you just like, you just feel alive. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, demodorite. So demodorite can come in quartz or it can just not have quartz in it. And it's a really, oh, I actually have, I have a grid here in my office. Here, here's, there's demodorite without it in the quartz base. Um, I love demodorite. I always have it in grids because um, I use this to remove blocks, to break old patterns, old thought patterns, and to help me get really clear on intentions. Um, so it's very protective, it's very calming. And when it's in quartz, it is amplified. So it's like, you are really gonna break old patterns because the things that hold us back in life are our thoughts. And demodorite is the crystal to stop that. And then um, hematite phantom quartz. Oh my gosh, this is one of my newest discoveries. I'm obsessed with it. I think I have one left in my stock. I need to get more, um, but this is a very, strong crystal. It helps with willpower and, a, and accessing subconscious information so that you can transform. Because a lot of times we do things and we don't know why. And this crystal helps with that. And it's got hematite in it that is very rejuvenating and it's optimistic and it gives you faith. And then the phantoms help you with soul growth so that you grow into who you're meant to be. So these are my high vibrational crystals that I'm working with right now pretty big, heavy hitters, um, but it's what we need right now. Um, okay, so let me tell you about my classes. Um, so um, Katie, you asked a question, um, um, isn't selenite a cleaner for other crystals? Okay, um, I, so I talk about this in my basic class. In the scientific world, if one crystal can cleanse another crystal, then they all can. Okay, because they all have a crystalline lattice. But the purists believe that certain crystals cleanse other crystals, like selenite can cleanse other crystals, clear quartz can cleanse other crystals. So it just depends on what you believe. But two very polar opposite belief systems, I teach both in my classes so that you can decide what's best for you. So I can't give you like a solid yes or no to that. <laughs> That's what you believe. All right, I teach three classes. They are all online. They are also in person in Lansing, Michigan, where I live. Um, I have a basic class, it's a full day. It is a full day. 
And if you think a full day online is exhausting, it's not. It is not. I poll my students all the time and they do well with it. I also have a pet class specific for pets. Okay, in both of these, you're going to get a good scientific foundation on the makeup of crystals, how crystals influence energy, um, crystal forms, how to, when to use a point, when to use a tumbled crystal, how to cleanse them, all the variety of ways of cleansing them, how to program crystals. And then in each class, there's 10 different crystals that are foundational crystals, uh, 10 for people, 10 for pets or you will get them as part of your, your class, unless you are an international student and then you get a price reduction and I ask you to go buy them yourself. But if you're in the US, I send you the crystals, okay? And then I teach you what they do physically and spiritually and how to use them. We go through chakra balancing um, and understanding what the chakras do on both people and pets. Um, I teach you how to make crystal grids. Um, I don't know if you can see, I actually, in my bookshelf, do you see those grids that I have there? Those are my business grids. I have to keep them away from Rudy because he tries to sit in them. <laughs> but I will teach you how to make grids and how they work. There is a science behind it. I will teach you body grid layouts, how to do that. Um, I teach you about how to make crystal elixirs and crystal water. And then in the pet class, how, do, how you use crystals safely with pets. And then after you take one of those, you can take both, but either of those is a prerequisite to then get into the advanced class. The advanced class is 18 hours. <laughs> and I keep adding to it. Oh my gosh, the workbook is like 120 pages. You guys, in the basic and the pet class, you get like a 50 page workbook. It is detailed. In the advanced class, it's like 120. I keep adding to it. I just, I gotta stop. I gotta stop, but I keep adding to it because I learn new stuff all the time. But we go really deep, really deep into things. And you're going to like you would have never thought that it related to crystals at all. Um, so, Rudy, what are you doing? Oh, my good. He's trying to get to the crystals. <laughs> um, but I we go through and we talk about how crystals actually form. We go deeper into sacred geometry, um, deeper into the energy shift. I'll tell you all about this third, fourth, fifth dimension shift we're in. I spend two hours talking about how to identify fake crystals. Oh my gosh, there's so many fake crystals. It's ridiculous. I go through master crystals. There's 12 of them and they are all clear quartz. When you learn about the master crystals, you will never look at clear quartz the same again. You will become obsessed with finding the master crystals and they're out there and the stores and the dealers have no idea what they are. And they are phenomenal. I go through... I think 23 or 25 advanced crystals, some of which I just talked about on the prior screens. Um, we do advanced chakras, add, add more chakras to our layouts, um, advanced grids, advanced tools like working with copper pyramids over a grid and um, crystal singing bowls and Oh my gosh, so many different advanced tools. And then I go into crystal ethics. And if you want to add crystals to your business, but with any class, the basic or the pet and the advanced, you get an invitation into my membership group called the Crystal Cluster. And dang, we have a good time in there. It's all continuing education. It's just continuing education. We have a once monthly meetup where we ask questions, we learn something. Sometimes I have a guest speaker. Um, I'm always testing out crazy things and I share it with the group, but that group gets first access to my private crystal store. And if there's anything left, because they're usually like a bunch of crystal vultures and they come in and they swoop and take everything. <laughs> if there's anything left, um, they're also available to my students. I send photos, I send videos. And then after that, if there's anything left, they go, they go public, but I usually don't have much left, but I, right now I do. So I think I'm going to do a public show pretty soon. So those are my classes. They're really intense. I mean, you probably got more in this one hour than you probably ever imagined with crystals. Now imagine sitting through an eight-hour class or an 18-hour class. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. I also give three certifications. So 
I give a certified crystal healer, a certified advanced crystal healer, and a certified animal crystal healer. So if you take all the way through advanced, you get the information on how to become certified. It's actually pretty easy. It's pretty easy. I mean, you got to do some work, but it's actually quite easy. And, you know, if you have any sort of business where you're working with people or pets, I mean, it's just good to do this, or you can just do it for the fun of it. I got my certification. I had no idea what I was going to do. 10 years later, this is what I'm doing. All right. So I have classes coming up. I teach my crystal classes three times a year. That's it. Three times a year. So um, they come back in February. So I do both in person and online. All right. The dates are on my website at manifestedharmony.com. All right. So I, if, if you're intrigued, if you have crystals and you didn't know what to do with them, if you have crystals and you, you don't even know what they are, like you forgot their name, I, I would encourage you to take the basic class. Not only are you going to get your feet wet, I'm going to kick you in the deep end. <laughs> You're going to get crystal soaked. You're going to get so much information. And then if you love it, like pretty much everybody else has, you're going to find yourself going to the advanced class. Now, here's the thing. I actually give a, a discount if you sign up for the basic and the advanced at the same time. So, um, and if you sign up for the pet class, I have discounts. If you work or volunteer with animals, I give a discount. Okay. Because I love helping. I'm a big pet person. I'm an animal protection attorney. So I love getting the crystals into those industries. All right. So um, the website is manifestedharmony.com slash crystal classes. And that's where you're going to find all the information there, the prices, how to enroll. Um, I think I, I think I've set my schedule all year. Um, and the, and the classes will come back again in, I think May and then like the fall, like September or October, just to give you an idea. All right. So that's all I got for today. Um, so thank you for joining in. I really appreciate it. And, um, I will send a recording to everybody and I was watching the chat and I didn't see any other questions come in. Um, so at this point, I mean, you know where to find me if you have, uh, any questions, but I really hope you take the crystal class. If you have, if you have crystals, if you have a love of crystals, this will completely change your relationship with crystals. You, you will finally really understand how they work and get information that you're not going to get in a book. You're just not. There's a lot of great books out there. I mean, I know many of the authors. They're highly respected. There's something about learning hands-on with a teacher. I don't do recordings. You come live. You come live. I won't do recordings. I know a lot of other people who who have their classes and you just kind of on demand learn, mm -mm. that's great for them. For me, I wanna see you. I wanna answer your questions. We're gonna interact, even if it's online. Um, that's, that's how I teach. So you're, you're gonna get, <laughs> you're gonna have a whole new appreciation for crystals and no longer will you ever question when you buy a crystal because you will know exactly what it does. All right, so I'm going to let y'all go. Um, just uh, double check in the comments here. Thank you for joining in. I really appreciate it. And I hope you join, join the, the class on the shifting energies next Tuesday. I think that's going to give you some very helpful information too, especially if you've been feeling a little off. You're not crazy. You're not. You are not crazy. So, all right. Well, thank you everybody for being here and I will talk with you later.